Hello medicos, welcome to MedBeards Nepal. In this video, we are going to learn about the bone of upper limb. And if you like this tutorial, do not forget to hit the like button and subscribe our channel and share it with your friends as well. Let's begin. Can you recognize this given bone? Okay, let me give you a few seconds. If you recognize this bone, then that's great. But if you are still confused, huh? either it is humerus or femur, then let me just clarify you that. We can see H for humerus and H for hand. So this is a long bone of hand. And we have another bone which is known as femur and this is the bone of leg. It is also known as thigh bone. Now to study any of the long bones, to make it easier to understand about the prominences, landmarks and structures along with the muscle attachment and side determination, we divide these long bones into three different parts. Upper end, which is also known as the proximal end, distal end or lower end, intervening elongated cylindrical structure which is called as shaft. Similarly, proximal end, distal end and the shaft. Now, we have certain differences between these two bones, though these are the long bones. So, first of all, we will see in the upper end or proximal end of the femur. What are the differences? So, head of the femur is more spherical than the head of the humerus. We can see humerus is slightly globular. And also we can see that head of the humerus has no any depressions, but head of the femur has central depression, which is also known as the phobia centralis. And also, if we see, there is the connection of neck with the shaft of the femur and the head. You can see there is prominent elongation of the neck. And in humerus, we have the lesser tubercle and greater tubercle or tuberosity, whereas in femur, we have greater trochanter and lesser trochanter. As a shaft, we can see this is the convex forward, more cylindrical and round than the humerus. Distally, we can see humerus has articulating prominent surfaces, trochlea and capitulum, whereas there is no such structure in femur. Distally, it has the larger condyles, which are acting as the articulating surface on the tibia bone. We hope this clarified your confusion to identify which one of the bone is this. Now, let us talk in details about the humerus. As it is a long bone, we can divide it into three parts. So, we will divide it into the upper end, which is also known as proximal end, lower end, which is also known as the distal end, and we have this intervening elongated cylindrical shaft, which connects these two ends. Now, to determine the side of any of the bone, what we have to keep in mind is that what are the structures or prominences or landmarks that are lying or situated anteriorly, posteriorly, laterally or medially. So, in this long bone humerus, proximally, we can see to be it in anatomical position. Head should be placed medially, lesser tubercle should be placed anteriorly and this greater tubercle is situated or placed laterally. This is about the proximal end of the humerus and if we see in the distal end of the humerus, we have this irregular side to side flattened distal end. Distal end as a whole is also known as the condyles but some literatures also say this capitulum and trochlea are the condyle and above it the structures are called epicondyles. The structures in the distal end are trochlea which is the articulating surface is a fully like in appearance capitulum is globular and that is situated laterally trochlea is situated medially medial and above to that is the medial epicondyle which is more prominent and a bit elongated than this lateral epicondyle we can see here Above the capitulum, anteriorly we have this radial fossa and above the trochlea we have this coronoid fossa. So, this is about the anterior and lateral and medial structures. And posteriorly, at the distal end, we have this olecranon fossa, where olecranon process of ulna bone articulates. This is the humerus of left arm. If this is placed like this, we can see here, someone is facing you with its left arm. So, what are the structures you can imagine? Head of the humerus medially, greater tubercle is laterally, lesser tubercle is anteriorly and like this we have anteriorly at the distal end, trochlea, medially, capitulum, laterally. This is the medial epicondyle which is more prominent and this is the lateral epicondyle. We have this coronoid fossa, radial fossa and posteriorly we have got this olecranon fossa. So, this is about the side determination of the humerus bone. Before proceeding towards the muscular attachment, let us learn few of the additional features of the humerus. So, first of all, we will see at the proximal end, this is the head of the humerus and this is separated from the rest of the upper end by this line which is known as the anatomical neck. 
So this is known as the anatomical neck of the humerus. We can see this demarcation. And now this upper end is separated from this shaft of the humerus by this surgical neck. This is the surgical neck. And nowadays, latest literatures have been mentioning about the morphological neck. So morphological neck is slightly or it is 0.5 centimeter above this surgical neck, which demarcates the epiphyseal line of the humerus. If we see from the posterior aspect, we have the three impressions of the greater tuberosity. This is the upper impression, middle impression and this is the lower impression. Upper impression will be inserted with the supraspinatus muscle, middle impression, infraspinatus muscle and at the lower impression, we will have the insertion of the teres minor muscle. So this is about the greater tuberosity having the three insertions and the lesser tubercle is inserted with the subscapularis muscle. Now, in between these two tuberosities, we have this sulcus, which is also known as intertubercular sulcus or bicipital group, where we can see it has the lateral lip and this is the medial lip and this is the floor of the sulcus. Here, we can remember the muscles through the mnemonics of the lady between the two measures. The lateral lip will have the insertion of pectoralis major, the floor will have the insertion with latissimus dorsi, whereas the medial lip will have the insertions with teres major, lady between the two major. So this is about the insertions in the proximal. Limb. If we talk about the shaft of the humerus, we have got three borders and three surfaces. We have got this anterior border, then we have got this medial border and the lateral border. And if we see from this direction, as you are looking at your own left humerus, so anterior border will be the continuation of the lateral lip of the intertubercular sulcus in the upper one third. In the middle one third, it will form the anterior lip of the deltoid tuberosity, and in the lower one third, it is very smooth and round. Now, tracing the lateral border from the lateral supracondylar ridge, it will be running upward and posteriorly up to the lower margin of the greater tuberosity posteriorly. And tracing the medial border from the medial supracondylar ridge, it will be passing up to the lower margin of the lesser tubercle and ending into the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus. So, this is the medial border surface. In between the anterior and medial border is known as the anteromedial surface. You can see this is your humerus, anteromedial surface. Surface between the anterior and lateral border is known as the anterolateral surface. And this anterolateral surface consists of the deltoid tuberosity, which has the insertion of deltoid muscle. And the area or the surface between the lateral and medial border is the posterior surface, which has the radial groove, which is intervening the lateral border. Now, if we see again in this position, above the radial group, posteriorly, we have the origin of the lateral head of the tricep muscle, while below the radial group, this is the radial group, below the radial group, we have the origin of the medial head of the triceps. We will learn in detail about all the origin and insertion of these muscles in a very easier way in our next dedicated videos of the muscles. And we will have the insertion of coracobrachialis muscle in the middle of this medial border. We can trace this medial border from the medial lip of the intertubercular sulcus. So, middle of the medial border will have the insertion of coracobrachialis muscle. And this lower half of the anteromedial surface and anterolateral surface will give the origin of brachialis muscle. As we understood about the muscular attachments in the shaft, different border and surfaces. Now, talking about the lower end of the or distal end of the humerus, we have these prominent structures. Medially, trochlea. Laterally, the globular one is this or the round one is the capitulum and this is the medial epicondyle which is more prominent than this lateral epicondyle. So, lateral epicondyle gives the common origin for the extensor, superficial extensor muscles along with the supinator and above it there is the lateral supracondylar ridge which gives the origination of extensor carpi radialis longus muscle. Now, coming to the medial epicondyle, it gives origin to the common flexor muscles anteriorly and the supracondylar ridge will give the origination of pronator teres. Now, this is all about the humerus with proximal end, shaft and distal end with the muscle attachments. We hope you watched this video completely and this has been very much helpful for your revision. If yes, do not forget to encourage us with your likes and subscription for more such tutorials in coming days. Do share with your friends as well. See you again in the next effective tutorial for you.